Welcome to new episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how to use private data in files like character device files in a Linux driver. So in this struct file you have a pointer called private data and this pointer contains data related to the currently open file descriptor. And today I want to show you how you can use it. So here you can see I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and now I will navigate into my Linux driver tutorial source folder. And I will use um, 34 my CDF as a template for today's video because we will also need to create a, C, a character device with read and write callbacks and this is already done in this video or in this uh, sort or in this yeah um, source code here. And I will create a new folder I will call 35 private data. So now let me navigate into it and let's see what's in here. So my cdev.c is a source file for our Linux driver and the make file is there to build the source. So I will rename it from my cdev to privdata.c and I will change this in the make file as well. So private data. Okay, so now let's open up the sources and let's edit them a little bit. So the first thing I will do is here in the kernel print case, I will rename this my cdev to triv data. So it's easier for us later if we need to grab the kernel slog to see what belongs to our driver. And I will change the module description as well for um, using private data for file descriptors. Okay. So here in this project, what we are doing is we are creating a new character device file and registering a device number. And over this character device, we can read out this global buffer variable here and we can write it too. And yes, what I will do now is I will delete this global variable so this buffer does no longer exist. And instead now every time I call open, I will allocate a new chunk of memory and I will store it in this private data pointer. So let me show you how I can do this. As I will need dynamical memory allocation, I have to include um, linux.slab.h. Okay, and now let me create a new function. I will call my open, which will contain our opening, um, yeah, our open callback function. So open needs two arguments. So a pointer from the type struct inode containing information about the device or about the file which is we are going to open and a struct file pointer, I will call file, and this is representing the our current file descriptor. And in here I will create a new character pointer, and then I will call kset alloc to allocate 256 bytes of memory, and the flag should be gfp kernel. Okay, and in case this returns zero, we are out of memory. So I will return error, no memory. And let's print out something to the kernel's lock. Priv data allocated 256 bytes of memory. And now here, I already told you this struct file has a, a pointer called private data and I will let this pointer point to our 256 allocated bytes. And then I will return zero to indicate everything worked fine. Okay, cool. And now here in the read callback, if you want to read this, first again, I need a character device pointer. Then I will set this to file because we're also passing our file struct here, private data. And then I will check if this is a null pointer, because if so, I will return minus one. And if not, yeah, the read is called and we are reading the current value of it. Okay, so in the write callback, it looks quite similar. Um, 
Okay, but one important thing is currently we, we don't free the memory. And this has to be done in the close callback. So let me add a new function, static. Um, it's also, the terminal is also integer. I will call it my close. The arguments are the same like in the open callback. And what we are doing here again, we need a pointer. The pointer is equal to, ah yeah, I forgot the cast, this I should maybe do in read and write as well. And in case this pointer is not equal to zero, I will use a k-free pointer and it will return zero. And maybe before let's print out, we have freed the memory. Okay, cool. So I've, yeah, let me add the cost here and in write as well. Okay, so much for the module. Now let's, oh yeah, of course I have to add my open and my close to the file operations. So the open callback will be my open and the release or close callback will be my close. Cool, now we can try to compile it. Let's build it with make and let's see how much mistakes I made. Okay, this is looking really good. So now let me load our module. Okay, and I'm in Tmox here, so I will open up a second, oh, no, <laughs> I will open up a second window. Yes. And even a third window. So in the third window, I will print out the kernel's lock. Oh, I'm a little bit too fast. <laughs> no, I won't do this now, because now what I want to do is I want to write a test application. So in here, I need some standard Unix or Linux headers. I need standard io.h, but I also need string.h, standard lib, unistd and I need function control. So I have a main function and some arguments which can be passed to the main function. I have a file descriptor here and a buffer from the size, let's say 64 bytes are enough here. The first thing I will do is I will check the number of arguments which are passed and if I have less than two arguments I will print f usage and the text to write because what I'm passing here I will write into my um, device file. Okay and if I have something to write let's open up the file and let's write it. So I will name my device file priv data as well and I want to open it with read and write permissions in case I get something smaller than zero and error occurred. So I will return with the error code here. And of course at the end I have to close the file and I have to return zero. Okay, so now let's do a write. So we will write out um, to our file descriptor, we will write argument number one and we will write the length of argument number one. Okay, then I will print F, press enter to continue and I will call getcher so it waits until I press return on my keyboard. And then I will do a read. I want to read from the file descriptor into buffer and I want to read 64 bytes. Maybe let's store this in a variable. And then let's print out, I got the bytes. And here, len and buffer. 
Yeah, so that should be it. Let me try to compile this test application. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention the type here. This should be a char. Okay, now I should be able to compile it. Yes, and now I will open up some more windows. One which will show us the kernels lock. And in here I will navigate it once again to programming, Linux driver, tutorials, 34 private data. And now let's, let's call this application and let's write our test. Oh yeah, I forgot to create the device file. So with make note, dev priv data c64.0. Now I have this priv data device file in here. And now if I call this, okay, we see 256 bytes were allocated. Um, the write callback was called. And if I press continue, um, the read callback was called. And then we will free everything. So the data only exists as long as the file is open and we will release it when we close it. So if we run this once again with hello world and now navigate to our second window and also run it in here. This is a test. So we are allocating some memory for the second time. We are calling the right callback here and now if I press enter. This will return this is a test because this is the data which is allocated to the file descriptor of this program. And if I'm pressing continue here, I will get hello world here. Okay, cool. So this is how private data works. But for what can you use it? Well, for example, if you have multiple device files of in the same driver like we have here with I2C where we have two nodes. In the open callback, we can search the list, find the corresponding I2C controller, and um, let the private data point to this I2C controller. And then in the read, write, and I/O control um, functions of this character device, we have the pointer available and don't have to iterate through the list of available I2C adapters again. So this is one option how you can use this private data in a real world driver. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thank you for watching and goodbye.